Welcome to another episode of Under the Strap. I'm your host, John Rathouse, and on this week's podcast, we welcome Willie Wilcox. Fresh off looping for Ben Carr in the USAM last month, where they advanced all the way to the finals, earning a berth into next year's Masters. Willie was candid as we jumped around a variety of topics. Most notably, Wilcox has one of the best stories of the year in his ability to claim over six months sober after opening up with the Fire Pit Collective earlier this year. Now with his own podcast, Tour Time, Willie has never sounded better and was candid about the AM, the band he was seeing when he finalized things with Carr, his memorable ace on 17 during the Players' Championship, and what he valued in a caddy during his playing days. Willie has his own way of talking. Think Alabama surfer, and he's under the strap with all that and more right now, brah. All right, joined now by Willie Wilcox, professional golfer, host of the Tour Time podcast. Two weeks ago, though, uh, caddy for Ben Carr at the USAM made it all the way to the finals. It was a great story. Hey, man, great to see you. Thanks for taking some time. Yeah, no problem, uh, Rat House. It's been a long time. Uh, you, you looped for me a couple of times, I think, right? I'm trying to think if I have or not. I remember, you know, Kelly Miller looped for you, longtime roommate of mine, and and I would follow you guys around at practice rounds. I definitely remember doing that. I don't know if I ever looped for you. We hung out a ton, though. Um, but yeah, yeah, caddied for Ben. It was super sick. And uh, yeah, just, you know, I mean, when you just go out for a one-week gig and you walk 11 rounds and the kid, you watch something like that happen, it's pretty pretty special. Yeah, I got a lot of questions about it. I I guess you mentioned the eleven rounds. I mean, and it's been a couple of weeks now, but like I'm I'm counting two practice rounds, yeah. two qualifying rounds, five match play wins. Four of them were over two days. You had all mm-hmm. that over like a week. Then that thirty six hole final on Sunday. I mean, how did your body feel like after hoofing it for the entire like eight or nine days? Honestly, it was fine. I mean, I. Uh... Since, uh, yeah, since I got my head right, I've been really working out hard. I've put on 25 pounds. Um, so that's since February. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I've been working hard. I felt, I felt great. I mean, it was something I, I could do. I feel like I could do it constantly. It felt good. I mean, I was carrying a college bag, which was still, it still had some weight because it was like the threat of rain. And um, But, yeah, I was good. Honestly, I was briefcasing it some of the time. I was just like, Ben, I'm going to walk all the way all briefcasing this. So... Yeah, you had a purse, right? You had the, you had the purse instead of the big staff bag. It, it was a little guy, yeah. It was just a hoofer. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was good. I mean, it was hilly, but, uh, yeah, watching somebody flush is just like, whatever, let's keep going. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess it was a great story. I mean, how did how did it come about that you were looping him for, for him that week? Because I heard a crazy backstory. I want to see if this is true. Yeah, I mean, I moved to Columbus uh, in – I mean, I started going up there in like eight, 2018, kind of left Jute, sold my house in 2020, lived in Columbus, you know, knew it was dating a girl from there. And um, yeah, he was just an 18 year old kid playing at the golf course. He was, I mean, he was legit, um, hit the ball great. But over the last four years, um, he's just gotten really dirty. And uh, but yeah, Col- uh, Country Club of Columbus is a Donald Ross and uh, that Russell Henley, Larry Mize, um and some other strike shows were members out there. So, yeah, I just started playing with him, and it was just like, this kid's dropping a lot of 62s out here, you know? <laughs> like, um, yeah. And he's just gotten a lot more powerful, and, you know, I'm just watching him. I think he's probably ranked in the top 30 in the in the world as an amateur now, so, you know, yeah, pretty legit. But So you guys knew each other a little bit, but was there any story to, like, actually linking up for the amateur or was that planned all along or did he like, was that a last minute thing at all? I had heard that from someone. It, it was pretty last minute. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was just going to the concert. Um, this, this is the story I want to hear about. Cause you were going to see rage against the machine or you're always, you're always looking for a new concert. I got to tell you, uh, I saw red hot chili peppers coming soon to kind of where you're at. And then, uh, September, you should come to Omaha here, September 9th. 311 at Shadow Ridge, which is a golf course in Omaha. That would be epic. I've seen them probably 20 times. Yeah, I'm kind of concert crazy. Um, but yeah, I bought Rage tickets. I hadn't toured in 11 years. And I was just, I was going to New York City to hang out with my buddies anyway. You know, I was just going to be there on Friday. And I was like, when's practice round? He said 8.30 a.m. on Saturday. 
I was like, okay. And I mean, I, I was, I was a good boy. Everything's, it was just fine. Um, I, I champed it out. Um, but yeah, the raid show is incredible. And, you know, I've been to probably 15 shows this summer. Um, I just, just, will just continue to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if they're anywhere near me, I go. For, for sure. There's nothing better than live music. It gets your soul going, right? Just like a U.S. caddy and a U.S. Am. Yes, it was a wild 11 days. I was just, I, I thought it was going to be maybe a couple of days. And next thing I know, the kid just starts hitting missiles and putting great and wedging it. Like it, it was just, he didn't hit any real foul balls in 196 holes. Yeah. Like I, I don't recall one like goodbye ball. So yeah, it was just like, man, this is, you know, and he turned 22 Wednesday of the tournament and, uh, yeah, it was just, it was special to watch. A lot of tears, you know, I mean, his mom, his whole squad was there, yeah. so yeah. it was legit. Yeah, I, I mean, and I saw a video that week that the USGA put out. There was some good, like, social media stuff. You were good to follow all week, but they, they had, like, a little video there of you, like, watching him practice, and they caught a clip of you talking about, like, his his lead hand position and how he's kind of able to really flex it nicely, and you're like, you know, that's a tour thing. Like, I mean – you know, you mentioned the Stripe show, the 62s. Like, I mean, you've played on tour. I mean, I know he's still in college, but you, you feel like this kid's, like, really, really good, huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, he has got the most simple move, and he's, like, he's like 5'8", 175. The guy's with the big lower base. I mean, David Lingworth won this week. Yeah. I mean, if he's not built like a bulldog. I don't know who is. So this guy's kind of, you know, just a big, strong, lower body type guy. And just, I mean, it, it's a short arm swing, but a huge shoulder turn. And the legs are just perfect. And I was like, how do you hit? cut like what are you doing to hit a fade he's like i make sure my hips are quick i was like all right and how to draw he's like i slow my hips down a little bit i was like that's the easiest swing thought i've ever heard <laughs> well that's cool because i mean i was thinking about your swing and i want to hear a little bit about that i mean you mentioned your mom too so you covered two bases there like i kind of want to hear about you growing up uh and your mom is your teacher your mom's like a college golf coach or she's a teacher like you know my mom got me into the game she wasn't a teacher she was playing in like you know, a Wednesday league with her girlfriends, but that's, you know, my mom introduced me too. I just kind of want to hear a little bit about the background of your mom, your mom introducing you to the game. And, and then I want to just kind of get into your swing because yours is super simple too. I mean, maybe a little different than Ben's, but, but definitely would like to talk some golf swing with you. Yeah, no, I'm down. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it still looks all right. I just don't flush as much, but uh, I just, I, for, for whatever reason, I don't know why I'm, I'm swinging it over 120. Yeah. And I'm just not really hitting it that straight. Um, but yes, my mom's super legit and she's a Hall of Famer in Birmingham. Uh, and uh, she taught me how to, you know, swing the club real simple when I was younger. And it was just kind of like a reactionary type thing. And of course, you played, had a lot of trees on it. You know, you had to keep it under them. So I learned how to just hit super low to keep it under the trees. And that's how I shot the lowest scores out there. And she did the same thing. Uh, but yeah, she played four years at Auburn and was, you know, just a great player. Mm -hmm. She uh, probably could have turned pro. She played yeah. against Nancy Lopez a bunch as a as a um, as a teenager. Played yeah. the world. Uh, what's the one? The uh, Junior World. Junior Worlds out at Torrey Pines is where the men's usually is. Yeah, it's the same place. Yeah, mom played it in like you know seventy five. <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, because you hear so many guys like you know everybody's got different stories, but you hear like you know, how much like, you know, Justin Thomas's dad is involved. Like it's a lot of dads usually is like, oh, but for you is a little different as your mom. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely a, um, uh, not the norm and people, that's why people gravitated towards it. Like, yeah, I was very, I was very lucky while I was out there. I wish I would have done things differently. And, I, um, cause it was just, uh, you know, it was so much fun, but you don't realize how good you have it. But, right. um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's definitely um, something that's been a part of my life a long time, and now I give lessons and it feels good. And mom still gives lessons as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we still do it. And uh, I was playing good earlier this year, but uh, yeah, golf's uh, it's been my life, and it's going to continue to be because yeah. the podcast and, and giving lessons, and yeah. I'll I'll work back into you know a couple hundred balls a day eventually. Yeah, well, you did you did play like you mentioned earlier this year. We were talking about it, you know, a week ago over the phone. And, yeah. you know, those fire pit collective guys, that's been a really cool 
a group for you to be involved in and definitely want to like yeah. unravel some of that. But they held a qualifier earlier this year out at Goat Hill Park uh, and you won the thing and it got you a spot in the BMW championship on the Corn Ferry Tour, which, you know, maybe that wasn't your best week, but I'm really interested to hear about this Goat Hill Park. I mean, I've heard it's just legendary and and you had quite a day out there that day. Yeah, like Freddie couple Fred Couples plays it. Uh, John Ashworth owns it. Yep. Um. So he he's the Link Soul guy. Oceanside, California, for fire pits a mile from the entrance, and there's nine guys. Everybody was flushers. Like I put like Joe Hooks. Um. Let's see, Emilio Gonzalez, I believe is his name. Um. Daniel. Anyways, a, a bunch of very solid players. Yeah. Um. And uh, I shot nine under. A local guy shot seven, um, and then it was like six, 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 five, five. So everybody played well, and it's a really it's forty. What was it? I think it's like forty seven hundred yard par sixty five or something. <laughs> it's just savage on these hills, like impossible. The wind's pumping, and yeah, I just flushed. I flushed it like I've some of the best golf I've ever played. Good for how difficult, and I mean, if you hit one offline, it was on like an interstate, mm -hmm. um, and it's just hard as a rock and uh yeah i just rolled the crap out and then the next day we come out at noon and play the skins game and i just shoot a wad and i'm just like <laughs> you know and then one round you're like whatever right. um and then i continued to try to grind for the bmw i was all stoked but then just started hitting it sideways i don't yeah. really know i mean i'm over it now that's for sure but at the time i was just like I mean, you know, I won that first tournament by seven. I was seventeen hundred and three rounds on a pretty solid course, and I was just like, "Oh, I got it figured out." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, got it, and then just like, it was just like, "Uh, well, um, um, yeah, make the club face harder to find." <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> golf, golf gods. I don't know. Right. Well, I don't know, man. It's been a really crazy cool six months for you. I mean, you. I referenced the fire pit guys. That article that I think it was Mark Baldwin wrote about you uh, back in April. And I, I just know that this year has been really solid for you. And it's been quite a journey. I mean, you know, getting clean and, and you're just wearing it on your sleeve and, and open to all these possibilities and lots of good vibes right now, I guess. What has that journey been like for you the last six or so months? I mean, it's been really good. I mean, I, I weigh 25 pounds more and I, I just, I've always been such a, a rail and uh, now I've, I've found just the ability to like fill out. So um, yeah, I really am just focusing on like kind of being amazed how much my body changes and how much more I eat. I'm eating like thousands and thousands of calories a day. Whereas before I'd be on the road and, and I wasn't treating my body the right way. And, you know, I'm eating nothing out there walking, you know, walking a ton. You obviously can it a lot and you know exactly what I mean. We're walking a lot in the heat and I was, I was just malnourished. So over the last like six and a half months since I put down that poison, um, yeah, I just eat like, <laughs> like it's, you know, like the world's going to end and, uh, I'm just crushing food and working out. I work out every day and, uh, yeah, it's just been a lot easier to, wake up early and be an actual adult. I like that. That's really inspiring stuff, man. And I'm sure, I, I mean, let's just rip it back to the USM. I mean, did that make for even more of a, you know, emotional week for you too, being caught up in what was going on with Ben? I mean, it was his, his week, but you were kind of part of the story. And, and I had to think as you kind of looked out over the landscape throughout the week and you said, man, this is pretty cool. Like, and you know, Six months ago, this wasn't possible. And then now here I am looking at all these kind of cool things coming to me. And did that come across your mind as you guys were just, you know, slaying it out there throughout the week? Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is that, like, when you're doing that stuff, you can't physically um, do something like that. And and you could never leave a place for over a week either. Because um, when you're living that lifestyle, you know, you can't be far, um, you know, uh, from the from the bad influences so now that i don't associate with any of those people anymore i, I can just leave town along for as long as i want and do like physical fun stuff in the in the boiling heat and you know help a kid uh, get in the master so uh yeah it was definitely yeah it was pretty damn cool i mean i was just feeling good yeah, I want to I want to ask you about the masters cuz that that is an awesome reward of all that i guess how would you describe the atmosphere of the week, I mean, as it went on further and further, I mean, the semis, that was a huge one. Cause if you don't win the semis, then that you don't really have that prize. 
of yeah. the Masters and you make it that far, you want to get there. I mean, like how nerve wracking was the semis and what was the yeah. atmosphere like over the weekend? The semis were crazy because the tee time was 220 and then some weather rolled in at like, you know, 145 and we didn't tee off till 4 p.m. So, so like you get up at like 615, you know, like what else are you going to do? Like you just wake up. I mean, he's nervous. And uh, then he's got to wait um, 10 hours to, to send it. And, uh, I mean, he just laid in the clubhouse with his eyes closed for the last probably hour. Um, and then we went out there and fl flushed it. I mean, he leaned on me a few times. It's really nice with that laser. Um, yeah. When you can shoot, <laughs> shoot bunker lips, you know, tree yep. runouts. Um, so it's just like, bam, 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 bam. You just throw numbers at him. But, um, but yeah, he, uh, he eventually – got himself together and then on the first hole you know there's there i was i, I noticed the out of bounds left i know that uh, but i never saw any of those guys hit an ob he would just smash it like 340 down the middle and have like 62 hole and i was just like you don't see any trouble do you like like do you not see those soldiers all down the left <laughs> i'd be staring at those and uh you could hit it in the right a uh, rough and be all right but it was really impressive and then he just killed it i don't know i mean he just outplayed the guy. And then it, he was like five up. And the next thing we know, I think we were one up. And then he wins 17. But uh, actually, the kid we got paired, maybe is in the quarters. I don't remember. One kid was ranked like 1,300 in the world. And he was this lefty that plays at an NAIA, which was yeah. kind of interesting. Um, but he was still, he was just a flusher. But still, I mean, you could get paired against the number two player in the world, you know, which is, that's a tough draw. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, one match went 19 holes, one match, a lot of them, a couple of them went 18. But anyways, um, he, uh, he represented though, man, he'd had these gnarly, like fall line seven footers to have a match on like 18. He made like two of them. Like if you push it this much or pull it that much, it's missing dead down the mm. slope. I'm talking greens mm. are on like a 14 and he just buries both of them. And I'm just, yeah. I was just like, this is sick. That'll, that'll serve him good at Augusta. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, not that I'm, I'm not – I can't say that I'm getting the bag. I don't know. I, I mean, I, yeah. I hope so. Um, yeah. But if, you know, if I was a 22-year-old dude in his position, I know it would be a – that's got to be a lot of pressure. Yeah. What You guys took down a, a that guy, too, the guy that was in his 30s. I, can't, I don't know his name. off. Andrew Van Lasso. Yeah, that, that guy's Bond. a cool cat, huh? Von Lasso. Um, yeah, legend, dude. And and he yeah, that was the whole yeah, Ben made like a gutsy like six footer to win that match. That dude's flushes the ball. Um and then he came out and watched us the next eighteen. Yeah. And uh just he's hanging around all week week having a big time. He joined up with all my buddies from New Jersey. I went to the concert with a handful of people. They were all out there. Um I mean, next thing you knew, there was thousands of people. It was nuts. It was nuts. Did you ever play in the USAM? Yeah, yeah, I played in 08. Where was that at? Pinehurst. Pinehurst, which is, yeah. man, back then, I mean, that's Pinehurst with all the Bermuda everywhere. Yeah, I caddied in the 05 US Open. Uh, did you shot 78? 78 there? Oh, yeah. Sorry, 70, 80. Oh, 70, 80. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That Played the U.S. Open. I played three USGA events. Never made the well. No, I did did all right in the junior. Although I did lose my first match, but I did good in stroke play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those things are legit, dude. I mean, yeah. obviously, caddy in them. It's just, it's a surreal type of thing, you know. It's the it's the hundred twenty second. So. Yeah. Yeah. What, how would you describe your caddy style out there then? I mean, have you done any looping before that that week? And and kind of what you know what how's how do you go about your business out there? Probably a little too in the game. I mean, both I, I caddied for Russell Knox in Bermuda last fall, so I got that's right. Yeah, yeah. We finished twelfth, or he finished twelfth. Yeah, we wanted it. Yeah, no, you got it right. No, it's we. It's we. If he missed the cut, it's he missed the cut. We finished twelfth. That's exactly exactly. That's the way we need to treat it. Um, they all know it's in good fun. Um, right. But yeah, dude, he finishes twelfth in like the hard wave. It's blowing a. It's blowing so hard. The course was closed Monday to Wednesday. So I, we didn't see the golf course. He didn't hit a shot. Um, I didn't, you know, I just had the, the book. And yeah, I mean, he 
plays like an absolute baller and makes like 150 grand. I'm just like, this is unbelievable. So everybody I've played for or caddied for professionally has always striped it. And you're yeah. just like, just watching in awe. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I definitely would like to do it. I get a little, I mean, I, I get pretty stoked up, but I mean, you know, Ben asked me a couple of times, uh, like, Hey man, I need to calm down. And I would say, you know, just kind of like, I mean, it, it, with your preparation that you've done for this tournament, like, is there anything that you left out? Could you, you know, did you shortchange yourself at all with your preparation? And you'd just be like, no, I do, you know, stuff like that. Just be like, I know you've worked hard for this moment. Like, here we go. You know what I mean? Like, right. Let's roll. So you're just kind of saying, trust, trust what you're bringing because you've worked, you've, you're yeah. prepared as you can be. Yeah. I was like, you know, you just try your hardest. You're, and, and I just remind him that he's absolutely flushing. Um, yeah. I'm just like, continue to do what you're doing. You're playing beautifully. Just he, when he went from five up to one up in the semis or maybe it was the quarters, I don't remember. Um, but he got pretty shook, you know, shaken up. And I was just kind of like, dude, you, would you have taken a one up lead on 16 T on when on number one? He was like, yeah. I was like, new tournament. Let's go. Yeah. I love that dude. So, I mean, you're just, you're out there just saying, I mean, you're thinking it through, but you're saying what comes to top of your, you're just keeping it real out there, which I mean, yeah. is all a, a good caddy can do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess that's good. I mean, you would know you've caddied at a high level. I mean, I just try to be like, I mean, it's hard to just tell somebody. I know what flushing's all about, and I know what it takes. And what he was doing was was special. He just kind of missed a few in weird spots and made like a bogey or a double. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. dude, you really didn't hit that bad of a shot. Or I, I wouldn't say that, but um, yeah, you just got to choose what. And mostly, I think it's what uh, not to say, um, knowing when to talk, being basically a mute when you need to be a mute. Um, sure, but not but over talk can absolutely screw you as much as not talking. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, well, and you would, and you would know too, though, cause you on the other side, I think a lot of the really good caddies are really good players and guys that have even played mini tours yeah. or professionally and stuff like that. Like when you were playing more full time, you know, on the corn Ferry tour on the PGA tour, like you were like, what did you seek out in a caddy? And you know, what did you like to have your caddy do for you or, or how did you like to use your caddy out there? Um, I mean, honestly, I relied on him extremely heavily when I was playing well, even when I wasn't. Um, yeah, I was just like, dude, I, I don't, I didn't even carry a book probably the last eight years I played. Um, and I sure as heck didn't take any notes. I mean, it was just like a point and shoot type thing. So they just needed to, tell, you know, that was it. Um, they would, you know, some, a lot of my caddies were pretty, you know, um, I don't want to say lazy. That's cause that's not right. But they, they were more just homies, you know, they weren't necessarily, yeah. yep. I mean, we would put our heads together and I would have a, I would have a book some of the time, but anyways, I could tell if he got it wrong. If he says like 145 and I can tell it's not that, I'd just be like, let's do that one again. Um, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I would, I just wanted buddies on the bag. Cause honestly, I, we were just having such a good time um that it was just yeah i mean it was probably it was more important i'm, I'm hearing you say it was like more important for them to match your like <laughs> vibe out yeah. there necessarily than for them to be some expert that knew everything about the golf course because you knew what you were doing. yeah exactly i almost found, found the you know the over um analyzation a little annoying it was just just because you know my my opinion is like either flushing or not and you know what the bunker carries are you know what the run through is just you know where to hit it. One of your all-time flusher moments was at Sawgrass on 17 when you hooped one. I, I mean, yeah, that that was kind of a gnarly swing. I was playing kind of kind of crappy then. I mean, the swing was ugly. I, if they could have got that two years earlier, it would have been a lot more like fluid, I think. <laughs> but it was like such, it was such a stab. But that's why I like landed and rolled out because I kind of chunked it a little <laughs> bit. Um, it was definitely a little little sod. I mean. Because 140 to the top of that slope downwind, I mean, that's kind of a papped wedge. You know what I mean? Like, you should be able to get 50 out of that thing if you're hitting it downwind. I mean, now, I, like, right now, I can hit my wedge like 160. I could fly it in the back stands right now. Um, but then I was just, like, throwing my little arms at it. <laughs> and uh, But it was cool. It was cool. You, you chunked one in the hole on 17. Pretty good. Yeah, literally sodded it because I mean that's why it rolled out. I mean it would have had a lot more check right, than that. Right. It landed, it rolled out like fifteen right. feet. What was the course on tour that you feel like looking back, like, or if you get 
you know, your game going, you know, in a couple of years, like where could you win out on tour? What, what's like your, your spot? I mean, I loved Memphis, but I mean, like I haven't, I haven't reached that level of ball striking since, well, 18, I played well, but that's four years ago and 18, I flushed it and just couldn't putt on the, on the corn Ferry tour. But, um, I mean, it's, it's hard to even think about it like that because I just, I haven't played in two, uh, two well, Anyways, I haven't played in a while. <laughs> yeah, the way you know how to play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, as long as if you're bombing the driver, the new equipment change kind of messes with me because because uh, I like my driver to be more open and flat. And you can only go two degrees one way or the other. So I can't quite get the, the right rip on it. I don't know. I, don't, I prefer to just, yeah, I don't know, hit a driving iron. I, the, the driver, I rem, I'm sure you still have it. I mean, this is kind of when we were hanging out a little bit. The Cleveland. I mean, I remember you with the Cleveland yeah. Classic, the one that they made it look like an old, yeah. you know, persimmon-headed one, and you just slayed that thing. Yeah, yeah. The black one was real sick. Um, but, yeah, all the Cleveland was dope, and then they went to Strixon, which is a good brand, but they had a completely different, like, research and develop. You know, it was a completely different philosophy. They're like tin cans, and I just couldn't get them to spin. And, um, but, yeah. I mean, it was a fun. Tr- I love those those super adjustable heads, but they put the adjustability in the hands of the consumer instead of having like tour players be able to dial their stuff in. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So, um, All right. Well, then let's flip back into that final round, that matchup with uh, Sam Bennett. I mean, it was a, it was a great battle, and your boy had a sick comeback on the backside. Um, I was wa- I was kind of flipping in and out of it, and our our boy Kelly Miller was given giving me updates as I was not able to watch some of it. And he, he said uh, there was back-to-back hole outs by Ben there. Uh, like one, he putted in and then he chipped in one and like, it was like the atmosphere yeah. was off the chain. Five and six. Yeah. They, he made a probably 65 footer from off the green. And the next hole is like a two thirty par three hits four iron, just short chips. Then Sam would just laser to like a hybrid in there to like 12 feet to like anytime. I mean, the two shots that these dudes hit on the 11th hole on Sunday, the hole was at like two sixty four, but it was playing down 20 and it's playing great. Yeah, and the, and just you saw them. I mean, the two laser beams, like with no turn, with these hybrids dead into the teeth. Like people don't realize that's blowing like probably twelve or fifteen in, and they just hit these missiles right. They both hit it inside like twelve feet, and everybody. It was just, it was just high quality golf. Yeah, it was. That those were good because your boy stepped up and hit a sick little cut seed in there. And then that Bennett cat came in there and did the same thing. I was like, damn, this is like, they're making it look like a nine iron. Yeah. And then the next whole Ben got a bad line in the fairway again. He got kind of screwed on that fairway twice. So I'm interested in in uh, the par five, 13, right? That was such yeah. a crazy five or 10 minutes there. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I'm curious if, you know, looking back on that, if you feel like, you know, you, you would have done anything differently or not. I, 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 there's so many people were dissecting that and I'm glad I caught you like two weeks later instead of like a day afterwards, because honestly, like I wouldn't have changed anything about him hitting that, that club and that he still hit in. He just made a really bad swing. I don't know what you were thinking then being in the moment of all that, you know, is it out of bounds? Is it not? And all that crap that went on for that 10 minutes. I mean, what, what was your vantage point? Yeah. It was bizarre because we didn't know if his ball was out. You know, we didn't know. And so he hits his ball left and they won't signal him. But then Ben's like walking into the shot, like about to hit. And and he drops the ball and is about to hit it. So everybody starts yelling. So he so Ben then backs off the shot. And then the kid rips one like on the green or close. Um, And then might have been on. Yeah, it was hard to tell. You couldn't tell. Right. From where. Yeah, he hit a dart. Yeah, and and he hit a dart. Like you could have been putting from thirty feet. He might have chipped it in. Like yeah, it was. I mean, still he would have been putting for par. But yeah, um, and but you know, Ben. Uh, yeah, seven iron wedge would have definitely won the hole. But um, the, yeah, he just. I don't know. I mean, it, he 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 hit one eighty five with his driver on ball speed. So his his clubs were probably going the long the woods like thirty yards farther. So, you know, that's kind of hard to, and it's 195 holes. And that was like, you know, the, the 30th hole or something. Right. 
um, of the of the final day. So, um, so so what would you put that? Yeah, the hundred like eighty ninth hole. Um, so at that point, you just hit that same club a million times. Yeah, and he's just flushed it every single time, and you're just like, uh, yeah. I mean, and he was about to hit anyways. It was it was a weird weird scenario. They didn't signal us either, so. I was like, dude, I think yours is in. And he was like, I think it is too. And then for one minute, it's out. Wow. Like, why did they not signal? It was bizarre. Um, but, I mean, he battled hard. I guess, is there any advice or anything from the week that you're particularly proud of of giving him out there? You mentioned a few moments where it was like you kind of, you know, settled him down or reminded him of where, you know, the work he put in. Is there anything that stands out to you? I mean, just like he'd be focused on like a back pen number and – you know, it'd be like 103, but like going over is just not an option. He'd say something like 100 shot. And I'm like, you know, try to hit this slope at like 96. I mean, it's just different shots where you Love just it. can't go, you know, just forgetting the pen I think is huge. But, you know, good lines off tees and stuff. And I'm just kind of like, which one are you going to hit? The bomb straight or the bomb two-yard cut? <laughs> and, um, and his ball gets to its apex and just gently falls to the right. And I'm just kind of like, good shot. And then he rolls everything in. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. So then, I mean, it gets him, you know, presumably into the Masters. They, they were kind of being like, it might get him in the Masters because, you know, obviously the Masters can always decide yeah. who gets in and not. But in more likelihood than it's going to be in the Masters. I mean, has that ever has that has that ever happened, do you think? <laughs> I don't think so. And it's never happened that CBS hasn't gotten the broadcast the next year either. Uh, you know, they sign these one year deals. But I mean. You know, how cool is that? Um, I know you were stoked on that. And, and you guys, you said you were big Tiger Woods fans and everything. Like, uh, for him to, to accomplish that and to have that invitation, you know, coming to him in December, I mean, how sweet. Oh, yeah. I mean, is that when the letters go out? Um, I mean, yeah. I Something mean, the like whole thing, he's just become so busy, but he's a 22-year-old guy, you know. So I'm just, I'm just kind of. I'm just chilling. Um, and, uh, and I'm just, I'll be there for him if he needs me. And, uh, it was just a cool ride and to watch somebody that young do something that cool, you know, walking by the Tiger yeah. Woods sign every day and like giving it kind of a slap. <laughs> um, it was just cool. It, you know, 122nd USM pretty legit. Yeah. Pretty legit. Like that's a good wrap on it. I mean, uh, what's your favorite Tiger Woods moment? You know, when you think back through the years there one shot or, that stands out to you? Um, yeah. I mean, I mean the, the fist pumps were so aggressive when he was younger. Um, I think when he makes the putt at the uh, USAM at Sawgrass on 17, I, you know, that's huge. But, I mean, it, the, the Saturday at the 08 US Open, I mean, both those eagles on the back nine on Sunday were disgusting. I mean, I like the chip-in one. Um, oh, well, when you hit, hit it over the green on number 16 in 2005 at the Masters, I love that one. That's the Tiger with a roll down the hill. and the Vern Lundquist with the call as it trickles out. In your life. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I went to the Masters this year, and I walked straight to that chip. Like, that was the first thing I wanted to see, and I was like, man, this is not an easy shot. <laughs> like, I know it's not an easy shot, but right. you, know, you can't get that thing. I did one time for John – no, for John Merrick in 09. Nice. Yeah, it was sick. And um, that's kind of cool because I had gone for the first time myself the year before. Pepsi Steve had extra tickets. And I did the whole Jim Nance thing. I went down to San Antonio after Houston. They won. He was with Johnson Wagner. They won Houston, got on the private plane to Augusta. I went down to San Antonio on that Monday night to go to the national championship game. It was Kansas and Memphis. Oh, nice. And then saw that. Uh, Derek Rose. Derek Rose's Chalmers hit a shot at the buzzer. Yeah. It was a really good game. And then Pepsi gives me a call that night or the next day. He's like, hey, you got an extra ticket to the Masters. Do you want to come? So I was like, yeah, I'll be there. And that was kind of when I, I saw like how you could qualify for it and stuff and and saw the golf course epic. And, you know, Merrick, you know, rolled it in there and played well that week too. But that's cool for you. Cause really? You were, what place? He finished sixth. Oh, my God. One and only time. Like, I mean – you know, he backdoored it a little bit, um, had a little piece of the lead on Friday and we got to 12 and that was that front left pin. And we went over there at it and he made a double bogey. Uh, Short right or long? No, he hit it kind of front left pin. He hit it just a little pin high left, but it trickled oh, yeah. into the water. Um, yeah. He had this funky drop over there by the by the walk path. But 
Um, you got to dial one in there. That wind's got to be brutal for a caddy. It, it is. I think that year the weather was really good, but I mean, yeah, it's a really unique hole. And, and I think that advice that guys have for like aiming over the bunker, I think that holds water. And then there's probably some situations where you know exactly where the wind is, you know, or there's not enough wind and you're hitting it good where you're like, Hey, I feel pretty good about this. I'm just going to hit it over at that pin, but the whole design is so good. All of them are just so sad. I mean, walking around there, the shout out, I saw a tiger hit on seven on Saturday, this flop. And just where the pins are, like on eight, that back right pin on the par five and uh, the middle pin on seven. I'm just like, yeah. they're just right on spines. I'm just like, this is nuts. Yeah. I mean, Ben can do it though. <laughs> he, can, he can. I mean, you know, to me, it was just all about, and you notice it there, the property. I mean, you just have to be in tune with that Ray's Creek. And then if you can just get in that mode that he was in at the amateur where you're just like, all right, I'm here to play golf. This is no big deal, even though it's, you know, the biggest golf tournament in the world. And you kind of get can catch a groove and get into a rhythm and you just kind of get down with all the spirits and stuff like you did at Goat Hill that one day. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Some days it just, it just lines yeah. up. I mean, the tournament I played before that I was balling. And then when I won that, I mean, my head was just about to explode. <laughs> I was just like, no way you just pulled this off. Um, and then I won some, I won the, or I came in second in the U S open qualifier and then God played like a dog in the BMW. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, I was like, and my, my grandfather did pass away that oh. too. Um, he, he was, he was 91. I mean, he had a, he had a great mm -hmm. run, uh, May he rest in peace. But but still, it was just like, oh man, when you're you got all those eyes on you. There was a camera with me the whole week. I was just like, I just wanted. I was like, I can't. I'm yeah. sorry. It's like I just shoot 76. How do you feel? I'm like, not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> not, not yeah, good dude. Feels the same. <laughs> so one of the guys I'm going to have him on the podcast later this fall. Fellow Nebraskan is a friend of yours, Danny Woodhead uh absolutely legend now, i know you guys went on a trip together recently you came up and played some sandhills golf in nebraska didn't you i was supposed to that was during oh, the, BMW. the bmw came in okay so you were there in spirit yeah the, the bmw ruined that trip <laughs> sit there um, rebooted but yeah it was yeah oh heck yeah they do it every year i mean you know if i still have an invite count me in i'm still in the group text <laughs> so i i want uh, I need to, I need to mention, I need to start like cracking jokes in there, but I'm always just whatever. They're always talking on that thing. Um, so, you know, the sub 70 guys, right? Oh yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I know of them and I was going to ask you about that. Like I see, you know, I was just looking at, um, yeah. Ryan French's Twitter mm -hmm. Monday Q info before I got on with you. And he's like, shout out to the sub 70 guys. And I just hear so many good things about them. I mean, I think you play their stuff right now. Like what, what is it about those guys that is so legendary? I mean, you know, they've only been around for like three and a half years and the clubs are well made and, and they come like with, you know, five, seven business days and um, I think the lighting in here is terrible. Um, it, they're, they're just quality sticks that come quickly and they're about half price of normal. And it's just like, this is a pretty nice combination. I mean, you know, I've been hitting them for two years and they still look good. Um, so yeah, just a nice direct to consumer brand that you, that, that yeah. you talk to the CEO on the phone and he'll just be super cool about it. So I like that. Yeah. You, you know, who's playing really good with those clubs right now is Steve Alker. Yeah. He's playing with the irons. Is he, or is he, is he new level? I think he's, yeah, I think he's sub 70, isn't he? Like uh, Ch Chake is playing them. Um, Cal Quebec is playing the driver. Tommy Armour the third, I know is playing them. Alker, that would blow my mind if he wasn't playing Taylor, Taylor man. He was always, he was Unless always there's Taylor. a company called next level or something. I think, yeah. I think he's, I think he's playing them. I'll, I'll have to check, check I, into that or not. I haven't looked into it. I know, um, I mean, Alker's, uh, the consummate grinder. I mean, that dude, He's yeah. hit, he just didn't hit it quite long enough at, at the Corn Ferry and PGA Tour level, and now he's just cleaning up on the champion. Yes. Unbelievable story. Probably my favorite story in golf of the year, one of them at least, one of the five of us. Yeah. And Sam, I think, is still on his back. <laughs> yes, he for sure is. Yes. From Houston. They're just, he's making money wow. with him. Yeah, it's great. Who's, uh, who's the best player you ever teed it up with? I mean... Played with some good ones. I mean, like Jason Day, um, I would say Kepka. Yeah, Kepka was more impressive. Jason Day was so, I don't want to say mm -hmm. robotic because he's obviously still got tons of physical talent, duh. But um, you could just tell his lower body wasn't moving enough. 
You know, it's like he's so stable with his lower half. It was such a rip, and you're just like, man, that back. Um, you, I'm sure you got with Jason Day. Yeah, I've actually been out with Jason Day before. Super nice guy, and yeah. No, oh, he's, he's the nice. Yeah, he's impressive. He cheers you on the whole time. Yeah. He's giving you fist bumps when you make birdies. It's like, all right. Yeah. But but Kepka's just like driver, just. And then the one day I played with him, he chipped in three times and he shot 11 under. That was the second time I played with him. I got paired with him three times. Um, I was out with him once in Memphis. You mentioned that with uh, Seamus. And it was the week before he ended up winning the U.S. Open, his first U.S. Open. And he made the cut and was just going through the motions on the weekend. Like, could not, did not want to be there at all. And he took this line on 18 and he went over the entire lake at St. Jude. Like, 350 carry, just bludgeoned one. And I was like, who is this guy? And then the next week he went out there and, and cleaned up at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I played with Xander the week before he finished fifth and like turned into Xander. Um, and he goes like fifth, fifth or something like that. And But I played with him in Memphis. We both finished 51st. I buried the last of time and I was just kind of like, ha, you know, got him. <laughs> and, then, and then he finishes fifth the next week and just flushed and now he's just like one of the best in the world that, I, that happened a bunch I, I would like play with a guy he'd have a mediocre finish but he did a few shots coming down the stretch you're like what on god's green earth was that like on 16 at memphis he hits it up and has eight iron in right um, the par five yeah just, just like, roasted one over the trees i mean he just took kind of a draw down draws the it, yeah. i was yeah. like lord have mercy i had the hybrid in and i'm just like i was like we're just i'm walking out, we're walking out there and i'm like you know, talking to Xander, I'm like, what are you in driving distance on tour? And he's just like, I'm pretty far up there. I was yeah. just like, nice. I'm pretty far up there. I like that. And he's like, um, I'm like fourth. So I want to get, you know, we have maybe five, six minutes left. What are your thoughts on what's going on in the world of golf right now? The professional game There's so much, you know, crazy yeah. storylines. It's the wild west. What, what are your thoughts? What's Willie Wilcox's, you know, thoughts on pro golf right now? I mean, um, I would say that uh, me and all my buddies missed the boat. <laughs> I, I would say that the money train rolled in about four years late. Um, and, uh, you know, now these guys, and that, like somebody today, I was around with some people in Alabama and they were asking me about it. And, uh, and I was like, if somebody said, we're going to give you 10 million bucks and all you got to do is work 40 weeks a year. I mean, no, 12 weeks a year, you get 40 off. Right. And, you know, I'm talking to somebody that gets two weeks of vacation a year. You know what I mean? They're grinding yeah. in Alabama. Yeah. This, yeah. Was, this was a, an employee of the gym I go to. And she's just like, honey, I would be out of here. <laughs> and I'm just like, amen, sister. I was like, I, was yeah. like, I don't care. I don't care. Everybody yeah. takes the money. Um, if it's there, you know, if you can put more food on the table for mom and baby, that, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's the end goal. So right. like, I, you know, the tour is now being forced to react and uh, they're reacting in a big way. I mean, these dudes are getting half a million just for shit getting there. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, I love it. I mean, the money's yeah. just getting re, you know, it's just getting transferred to the players more. And it's like more of a NFL to, with guaranteed money thing. It's pretty sick. Right. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, you know, I think golfers by and large kind of underpaid professional athletes for a long yeah. time. And now this is just kind of bringing it up, you know, even, even par at best, you know, yeah. it's like a bidding war and you're just like, Whoa, what, what <laughs> they're yeah. $20 million purse. Like, okay. It's a good uh, time to be a golfer. Good time to be a caddy. I mean, you're right. You know, the money's around right now. Yeah. yeah. I had Denny on the podcast the other day and I'm just like, you finished 34th this year. Like how's your 2023 going to be? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I think I'm in Memorial and stuff. And that first is like 20, 25 minutes, whatever, you know, that, that, that yep. stack of tournaments. Yeah. Uh, and he finished like fourth there this year. I'm just like, Denny, keep rolling the pill brother like you're the man i was like thank you yes. for joining me on this podcast and and he goes he goes like two minutes in he's like he's like man i was worried you weren't gonna ask me to come on here yeah and i was just like no you weren't um so but, tell me about that though i want to talk about your podcast a little bit because i mean it's you know you you do tour time with yeah. jim renner and and you guys have had some killer guests and you're you're doing a great job and you're out in front because that's the hardest thing about this game. Like yeah. you've got some in the can, which is good job. I mean, who have been some of your favorite guests, you know, to talk to and, and, and cut it up with. I mean, Calc was awesome. Um, Calc Vecchia, like he's, 
He's the bomb. Um, I mean, Ryan Whitney's the man. Wisniewski's the man. Every guy, Matt Every, like Johnson Wagner. Um, you know, I mean, Marino, the, the sound quality was a little off, which bummed me out because it was like 90 minutes long. <laughs> but I mean, listening to Calc, I mean, I just find podcasting very easy because like who, number one, especially if they're a little bit older, doesn't want to reminisce. And I even me like, like, I mean, I think in 10 years, I'll really want to talk about it. But guys that won majors, um, it's just like, Calc, tell us about the 10 days you spent in 1989 in Scotland. Just what 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 happened that week? Go. <laughs> and he just goes off and yeah. you know i mean that the you know, the british open was probably 30 minutes and me and renner are just like yes <laughs> um fellow nebraska in there mark kalkovecki yeah, he's oh, a yeah, western sure. nebraska cat yeah. okay, and then he moved down to uh south florida and grew up with jack nicholas's oldest um so he was just spending the night at jack nicholas's house when he was like 12 oh wow that's an interesting part of that story wow so he's, yeah, he's kind of been mentored by Jack. Calc is the man. Huh. Um, you mentioned Marino there, too. And, and I was thinking, uh, I've caddied for Steve, but uh, and I do need to go back and listen to that. And then I was trying to think, I think you and I have played golf once before, and it was with Flo was in the group. I don't know who else was there, and we were out just sitting it around one day after. Might have been. Might have been Wayne. I don't Drano, know. He played yeah. a lot. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, Wayne O'Drano. What's your uh, – What's your favorite game to play out on the course? Like if you got a money game going or something like that, what would be a, a game that you would volunteer? Mm -hmm. Juke was it was all Nassau's. Um, I, would, I like Nassau's for sure, um, and Skins game. Um, but I would say I would say the Nassau because I feel like in Skins games I'm good for like one really sick hole still, but I'm just mostly just spraying it. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, down there in Juke it was. Or on tour, it was a two hundred dollar NASA Auto twos. Um, but Steve would always want to play like Auto one downs, and it was just like it would just get out of control. Right. Um, so, so what's the amount of money down there like that gets you a little uncomfortable, like when it's kind of flowing around? I mean, I, the most I ever lost in a day was probably like fifteen hundred bucks. But okay. yeah, that that's when it bothers me. Yeah. I mean, even though at, at the time it wasn't that big of a deal, but it's still like, you know, you pay 120 bucks to go out there and you know, then you pay the caddy another hundred and then you lose twelve hundred and you're just like <laughs> I could have just sat at the house or gone to go plant by myself. Um that's half the rent. Yeah, um yeah. half the mortgage but uh anyways yeah J jupe was like being on um, freaking uh just it was like being in heaven yeah yeah so much good golf there um all right i'll get you three questions we'll get you out of there what's your uh the favorite course you've ever played pebble when it comes to the views um i mean the birmingham west is probably my favorite and that's where 20 miles that way. And what's one that you've never had a chance to play before that you'd be like, man, I need to, I, I really need to play there sometime. Probably like Carnoustie. Um, I mean, I got, a, yeah, somebody asked me if I wanted to play Pine Valley a few years ago. And I just didn't feel like going all the way up to New Jersey, but, um, and that's, and that's where it is, right? New Jersey. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Probably Carnoustie. I like the golf over there. I like that. That's a good answer. All right. So then last question, it's the, we'll say it's the final round of the open championship, like your boy Calc and uh, you've got a one shot lead. I've been catting for you all week long. I've got you as far as I can. I go out on the town the night before the final round and I slip and break my leg. Can't go the final round for you. You can bring anyone in to caddy for you for the final 18. Who are you going to call to help you get across the finish line? um mosquito no um let's see uh gosh i don't know that's a hard one probably probably kev i mean my I, kevin enzer was my dog and i mean although probably i don't know i'm gonna say wayne i'm gonna say wayne drain a uh, although he'd probably be looping that day anyways but um he had a great run with troy Merritt. but his passion and his uh information is pretty good i agree with you completely he's he's great out there uh his enthusiasm and he's one of the best at holding a crowd quiet in the game. Oh, yeah. Super. Oh, yeah. He, he doesn't take any prisoners when it comes to quieting people down. <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, Willie, yeah. thanks for taking some time out. It was awesome to catch up yeah. with you. Uh, love, you know, how you're doing and just the story you put together this year. And I know there's only appreciate more it. good things to come, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Good to talk to you. And um, 
Yeah, I hope to be out there in Nebraska next next June at the at the latest. So, Absolutely. anyways, good You're talking to you, dude. I, I enjoy it. good work with the Caddy Network. Thanks, buddy. We'll be back soon with another podcast, so please subscribe. And in the meantime, make sure to follow the Caddy Network on all your social media channels. I'm host John Radhouse. Thank you for listening. Thank you.